Katamari Damacy is a game that was out of its time even when initially released. In fact, I'm not sure it's ever actually been of its time at any point. It's one of those weird peculiar games that you're not exactly sure how or why it was made, but you're immensely glad that it was. This is a HD release of a PlayStation 2 game. I'm Jordan from Switchwatch and we're going to see if this is worth a re-release, or should I say re-roll. <laughs> There's a running theme across Katamari Damacy that I'll probably mention time and time again, and that is utterly bizarre confusion with sprinkles of joy. The king of the cosmos tripped out the night before and somehow managed to destroy parts of the universe, making the sky basically empty from spinning and destroying the moon, constellations and stars that populate the night sky. He orders his diminutive little prince to fix this mess up that he caused, to do this, he is given a Katamari ball to hoover bits and bobs, which can then be repurposed to be stars and whatnot. While the story is very throwaway, the dialogue is very much in its own world. A curiosity of nonsense is spewed from the king of the cosmos' mouth, and it's oddly endearing as he greets you in different languages for each stage. It adds a lot of personality, even if it's more or less superfluous. There is a secondary storyline following a Japanese family whereby two kids notice the weird stuff going on around them while their mother is completely oblivious to the events. Again, it's one of those just why moments, but you're so glad it's here. It's purposefully weird without trying too hard, which is a difficult thing to do. <laughs> The gameplay is very simple, you as the prince have been given the Katamari ball and tasked with hoovering up just about anything possible by rolling it around and sticking things to it. As you begin very small, you can't instantly stick anything you want to your ball, instead you can only gather things smaller than yourself, pins, mahjong tiles, etc. Your ball gradually builds up over time so you can keep adding bigger and grander things to your all-consuming Katamari ball. This is where the hilarity starts when you start adding animals, trees and people to it. Starting by consuming paper clips all the way to enveloping entire cities. There's something so glorious about it all and watching you grow into a monstrosity with all sorts of weird stuff jutting out at every angle is just marvellous. The game is split up into stages and each new stage gradually increases the scope and magnitude of the ball you need to build. The first stage for example has you plonked inside of a living room and tasked with building a ball 10 centimeters in size. As the stages progress, this goal gets larger and larger. You'll see that living room expand to the garden, a town, and beyond as you create a ball meters large. There is a time limit too, which adds to the hurry and freneticism of each stage. It's very rarely too tight unless you really mess up yourself, but it's nice to have it as a little warning to step up your game. Usually you'll find yourself having a few minutes extra to really go to town, literally, and get the biggest ball possible. This is one of the greatest incentives to replay levels, to beat your own score and go way beyond what the game is asking you to do. Each stage also hides a gift from the king to the prince which you can use to customise your little prince with clothes and accessories. If you miss these, you may want to replay levels to nab them. In the end though, it's a very linear game that is pretty much a one trick pony. As much fun as it is, hoovering up all the knickknacks, this is the whole game and you're either going to be fine with that if you enjoy the goofy concept or you're not and you may feel bored after an hour or two of doing the basically the same thing except on a gradually grander scale. I do enjoy it and I'm fine with it, not developing too much, but some of you won't be so warmed to that. There are slight deviations to the get the biggest ball possible goal and that is when trying to complete special star constellations rather than a normal star. Each of these constellations has a theme, for example Pisces has you collecting as many fish or sea based animals as possible within a time limit. Cancer has you collecting as many crabs as possible. These are fun side distractions and a change of pace despite there also being a time limit to them. You can instantly tell that Katamari was made by someone who is not all that into games. Someone who's using the medium as a tool or a playground rather than thinking about selling as many copies as possible or following the latest trends or influences. Katamari is, or at least was, singular. It's its own breed of quirkiness that is difficult to quantify, but all I know is that it's a joy to play. The simplicity alone makes this chaotic rolling so pick up and play, literally anyone can understand the concept. Where they may fall down however is in the control setup. 
In the control schemes, you can select between three options. The usual controls are probably not quite you would expect going into them. You need to utilize both control sticks to move the ball and it's very reminiscent of controlling a tank. Think of it like the left analog stick controls the left tread while the right does for its side respectively. This means in order to turn on the spot, it requires you to push one of the analog sticks forward while the other one backwards. To be honest, it takes a while to get used to them. Even after playing for hours, you still kind of feel like you're constantly fighting with them. You may want to try a different setup, one called the simple controls. This is where you control the ball with the left stick only and turning of the camera with the right. You'd think this would be more like your standard third person action game, but in fact, it doesn't quite work how you'd expect. For a start, turning the camera right and left requires pushing up or down. It's well weird, and I'm not exactly sure it's better or simpler. Lastly, you have a new addition for this entry, taking a trip down gimmick lane, motion controls are involved, this time using the two Joy-Cons separately in the fashion of drumsticks, so your thumbs can rest nicely on the Z, L and R buttons. You can control the momentum by moving both sticks in the same direction. It's not ideal, but neither are any of the other control options. It's fair to say though that I thought it was fun controlling the little prince in this way. I guess it added to the overall chaos even if it's slightly more unwieldy. There is the two player mode to Katamari which I didn't get too much of a chance to play thoroughly. It's basically split screen battle mode where two players compete to make the biggest ball possible in three minutes. It could be fun, but like I said, I didn't get to try it fully enough to ascertain for sure. Visually, the game was probably pretty bad even for the time. While the crisp, colourful, fun art style was a winner, the models were atrocious even upon release. Half of me is convinced that this was for comedic purposes and to add to the charm and oddness of the game, but the other half of me is convinced that they had to do it in order to make the constant consumption and additions to the ball viable for the frame rate. Either way, it's really not a looker and I'm sure many people who will give this a quick glance will just dismiss the game, which is a pity because it's much more than just the visuals. This HD re-release has done little to improve that, but the colours really do pop. I personally like it, but I think others will scoff, and I won't hold it against you if you do, but it would be a pity. Performance-wise, it's not exactly perfect, which is worrying for an almost 15-year-old game. There were a couple of occasions where the frame rate didn't keep up with the action. It didn't affect the experience for me almost at all, but for such an old game, you would expect it to be flawless. The audio is yet another wonderfully weird marvel, it's funky and fits the whimsical nature of the gameplay immensely. Scratch that, it actually heightens the game to a next level in my opinion. I wouldn't even know how to describe it, but I'd compare it favourably to the wackiness of something like Taiko no Tatsujin, so eclectic and humorous. You'll be delighted as you are bewildered with the soundtrack and it's well worth the listen. I definitely suggest plugging some earphones for this one. <laughs> For value, Katamari Damacy Reroll is priced at $30 on the American eShop and I feel that's a decent price but it could have been a smidge cheaper to make it more of an impulse purchase. However, the fun you're going to have with it is worth it in my opinion. On the UK eShop it's £15.99 which I think is spot on. It's not the longest game in the world from start to finish but you can have a lot of fun replaying it in my opinion. There is a physical copy out there too, although its availability is in question as I couldn't find too much info about it currently. Maybe it's not available in Europe or something, but I'm sure Play Asia has a copy somewhere if you're a physical collector. Overall, Katamari Damacy Reroll is another chance to experience a classic quirk game that's just a complete eccentric joy. I'm sure it'll baffle plenty of people as they look on in confusion, but I really enjoy it. It's fun, but it rarely gets any more complicated than what it sets out as. Maybe that lack of progression will deter a good few people too, but I would recommend giving the demo a try, which you can find on the eShop. For me, I really enjoyed this HD re-release, but I'm wary I may not be wholeheartedly agreed with it on this one. But I can only go for personal feelings. The control schemes are probably the biggest thing holding it back these days, as well as the odd graphical choice, but I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. For the UK price, it's a solid recommendation. If you're into quirky weird games, then might I suggest you checking out my review of Taiko no Tatsujin, also from Bandai Namco. 
A very different kind of game, but the same kind of personality. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you guys over there. Take care. <laughs>